Hello, and welcome to another PWN Design Studio tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and show you how we can break down the snowfall node inside of Gaia and get slightly better results with the snow mask rather than relying on the default mask. The snow mask itself is actually really nice. Uh, it provides us a pretty decent mask that's detailed and we can use it for a whole slew of things. We can use this for snow, we can use it for sand, we can use it for dirt, rocks, whatever it is that you want to use it for. It's, it's pretty good at allowing us to be creative with what we want to do. And the nice thing about the snowfall node is that it actually applies height data to your landscape. So it's not just applying a mask and then letting you work with that mask. There's actual information that's being built upon with your underlying landscape. So by default, this is the look that you're going to get in most situations with your snow. And I mean, it's, it looks okay, but it's really flat. There's no detail to it. And so what we want to do uh, in a lot of cases is actually introduce additional details either on the snow or with details underlying it. The downside to this though, is that you can play with these settings all day and you might be able to get something that looks pretty good. But at the end of the day, you're still going to want to apply filters and effects specifically to the snow area. And that's where the snow mask comes in. So I've already built out a scene here where we can go ahead and see what the final result is. This is the final result. You can see here we actually have some fluvial lines coming in uh, that kind of break up the monotony of the snow mask. Now this is the look I went for temporarily, but it's not something that I was going to plan on keeping within the final product itself. So let's go ahead and see how this was made exactly. So we've got our snowfall here, and these are the settings I'm using. As you can see here, I played with almost all of them, but the settings here don't really matter too much. You can use whatever you want. It just comes down to what you're going to apply afterwards. So what I applied afterwards was an auto level for the snow mask, and that snow mask is being used for a whole slew of different selections here. Now that's not necessarily required, but you can definitely use that if you want. Directly out of the snowfall node, I put in an alluvium. Now alluvium is really good for getting sediment deposits that build up on top of geological features. And you can use this for snow, you can use it for sand, dirt, grime, whatever it is that you want to use it for. Alluvium is really good uh, to use. And in this case, I'm using residual rather than deposits. Residual is really good if I want to uh, have slightly more snow look that's building upon things. After that, I take it to a fluvial node. And that fluvial node breaks up the alluvium deposits and creates these lines, these fluvial lines. And this is not necessarily required afterwards, but I put a heel here just to kind of you know, shave off a little bit of the sharper edges of that fluvial node. And then the texture nodes, how I usually go about texturing things. So all in all, that's a much better look, but now we're getting more of like a hair comb effect and we don't necessarily want the hair comb effect. So what can we do if we want to add additional details to this? Maybe something that's a little bit more rocky or bumpy. Now you could use a surface node which is actually well, quite nice. I mean, you can use it on the rocky or rough setting, depending on what you want. But what I have found that works really well is the rocks node. What makes the rocks nodes really nice is it has an input and a mask. So we can go ahead and put the input on the snowfall. And then for the mask, we can go ahead and attach the snowfall mask directly to the mask of the rocks. You can use the auto level one if you want, if you're using an auto level. In this case, I'm just going to do it with the regular mask. And as you can see here, it's being applied only where the snow is falling based on that snowfall mask. This will add additional geometry. But again, 
We're going to go ahead and knock that up to the alluvian. We'll let the alluvium build out. And that will soften up our rocks quite a bit. We could also do additional adjustment adjustments in the rocks node. If we want, we can change the amount down to something much smaller, just so we have finer details. So like 2% will work pretty well. And if 2% is too much still, we can knock it down even further. You can go into the decibel regions if you wanted. Let's go ahead and see what it looks like with the alluvium and the fluvial. And again, that will just take a little bit of time to build out. If you're building at high resolutions, keep in mind that really strong fluvial uh, erosion is going to create some really long wait times. Just keep that in mind. So that looks a little better. Now we have it pretty rocky. So we'll let this build out and uh, we'll see what we can do after it's done building out while I explain some some other stuff as well. So uh, the rock, you don't have to stop at rocks. Um, you can use rock slide. So you can actually have a underlying rock slide that the snow is piling on top of. That will make it really nice looking as well. And keep in mind that Quad Spinner does plan on making adjustments to the snowfall node where it's actually going to introduce more chunky snow to it. it it looks more chunky probably because it's either more frozen or there's a drift to it or you know some other underlying whatever enhancements that they want to put in there but that's what it looks like they're trying to do um, so if, until that time comes one of the better ways to process your snow so it's not just so flat is to just use the snow mask and other effects I mean it's very simple as You'll see inside Gaia and other node-based applications that rely on chaining nodes together and using masks is anytime that there's a mask input, any amount of height data that you can generate can be used as that mask. And since the snow mask is just black or white, there's very little gray values in that mask. It's going to be a very sharp and strong mask, which means that you're going to get really sharp and strong details with whatever effects you throw on top of it. So keep that all in mind while you're building out your scenes. If you're happy with the way your snow looks, then that's totally fine. You don't have to worry about anything else. But sometimes it's just nice to break up the snow a little bit, make it a little more chunky in different areas, and have slightly different avalanche effects that are going on. And you can be extremely selective with this process. You don't have to uh, rely on... Um, just piling up the effects one after another and just chain, chaining them together. You can definitely change these around to be slightly more strong or blurry or reprocessed, however it is that you want to reprocess them and uh, stack them on top of each other through masks and layering that way, just like anything else in Gaia. So let's take one more final look at how this is going to look at 1K and then we'll wrap this up and... Uh, we'll go ahead and start thinking of the next tutorial. And the reason why I brought this up is in the Discord, I was noticing a lot of, uh, at least my Discord, I was noticing a lot of people using snow in their landscapes, and they all looked great. Don't get me wrong. They were, they, they had, they were either still working on it and making really good changes every iteration, or they already looked great. And there's just some minor things that I found to be kind of wonky about it. And of course, all of these things are subjective. I am not some kind of harbinger of perfection, obviously. But uh, I did notice that the snow was extremely flat. And in a lot of cases, especially after fresh snow, you might see some flatter, more detail, less snow. But as snow sticks around longer and longer and it thaws and then freezes again and then thaws and freezes, and freezes again, you get a little bit more variation in the way it looks. So let's go ahead and pin this for the uh, underlay, because that's what we're going to want inevitably. And that's looking a little bit better. Now you can still reprocess this and you know get the exact look you want, but 
at least you now know that you can do additional things with that snow mask other than just use it for coloring. You can use it for all sorts of filter effects. You can even do a swirl in here if you want with the with the whirl uh, noise. That might be something that I'll touch on a little bit later. And using the setup I have right here makes this look like it's dirty snow with slight variations in where it might be more frozen and where it's been more thawed. So that's also a good looking uh, fake spec material right there. But in any case, that is how you can utilize the snow mask for other things rather than just relying on just a base bare snow mask. If you guys have any questions or any other requests for tutorials, just let me know and I'll see you in the next one.